I mean, the markets are in a near to intermediate term downtrend, but they are in a longer term uptrend, especially gold. I mean, we, we easily forget that gold did set a new record high last year. One of the real driving factors is the U.S. dollar and, and the move of the Treasury rates. And that's really the question we have to ask ourselves. Are rates done going higher? And is the U.S. dollar done going higher? And that's where we'll find the bottom for, for gold and silver. So to dive into that, you know, we had non-farm payroll Friday, and that's important. And, and I'm hearing some whispers that there's going to be big jobs reports. So that's that's already being priced in right now. It could be a little bit of a buy the rumor, sell the news, or meaning, you know, sell gold, buy, buy after the report. But you back out a little macro here, and you, you obviously the COVID-19 pandemic um, re-emerging throughout the globe, really especially in Europe, and you're getting lockdowns there, that, that takes the air out of the euro, and, and that lifts the dollar. So the dollar is increasing in value because of, of COVID and as a safe haven overall, and that's weighing on gold. Remember, going back to the pandemic last year, this time March and April, gold was fighting deflationary fears. Lockdowns are deflationary fears. So unless we have a new catalyst of new stimulus measures, uh, gold's going to struggle in that rising dollar environment. Now, so is the dollar done going higher? Well, I, I think that some of the worst of the European lockdowns are being priced in right now. Obviously, news overnight uh, that, that Angela Merkel threatened to, to push those lockdowns out further does weigh on, uh, on gold and, and, and help uh, or does weigh in the euro and, and helps the dollar. Now, the rates are the other story and, and because you have all these inflationary tailwinds and you, then you have the, the uh, government, U.S. government printing more and more debt, which that debt is, is funded by treasuries. And, and so um, that supply is, is really hitting the market. Last week, just the seven-year note auction was really, really bad. And that, that, that supply uh, was not bought. And, and that, that cratered the bond market once again, really for the second month in a row. That, that auction was was very poor, and that, that restarted uh, the move in rates. So not only that, you you do have uh, the, the spread between the U.S. 10-year bond or 10-year note and, and the German 10-year boond at levels pre-pandemic. So you're looking at January 2020. That's a tailwind to the U.S. dollar as well. So a lot is working against gold right now, but I, I feel like we're you know, fundamentally working towards the latter innings of that. The question is, are some of these big technicals broken? Uh, and that becomes also a, uh, a very big headwind for gold, too. We'll, we're moving in here today on, on Tuesday, 1680 in, in gold is a big level, big trend line going back to uh, May of 2018. You know, and you have such a meteoric uptrend, a rise last year. There are a lot of support levels. There are a lot of consolidation zones. But you know, overall, I don't want to see this trend line being broken. It's just another big support level that gold chews through. So we're seeing gold respond so far. Maybe the worst is in here through the middle part of the week, and then it really is going to rely on that non-farm payroll report in the head of a long weekend. That's um, a very holiday shortened session on on Friday. Um, overall, too, you know, silver closing at at a new low for the year. It's not not pretty to see, but. 24 is is a is a support area and and I think silver can can bleed through things very easily so it's it's battling there 24 at the end of the day you want to see buyers step in what you don't want to see is is that selling carry in through uh, Wednesday and Thursday even ahead of non-farm payroll so those support levels are there um, but they definitely have their work cut out for it uh, both metals do I think there's two sides of the coin and obviously as we discussed the rate environment because as as these uh you know state and local governments reopen it's it's inflationary even though it's not showing up in the fed's metrics but that in and of itself coupled with the printing of debt in washington is, is a tailwind to to the rate story and that is a headwind for gold um you know, overall i think the best case scenario is just focus on the jobs report because that's really the the next big hurdle here as an economic event on friday is in the case that we are seeing some some expectations price in maybe a one million job gains for for March, which which would really make sense because you had you had new stimulus measures coming out, you have plans for reopening, service sectors hiring, weather getting warmer as you mentioned, Texas opening up in other states, so it would make sense to see a big jobs report. But the best case scenario for gold would really in the metal sector in general would be. Um, seeing something not quite that good but also you don't want anything anything bad because you know overall a a bad number um you know could could really weigh on on sort of lockdown feels um but 
just bad enough uh, would would be would be the way to go. Uh, and again, I'm looking at that from from an equity perspective too. And that's sort of where I want it to be. I don't want to see you know a reason for any sharp real sell offs in, in the equity markets because a very bad report. And I don't think a bad report is going to be the case, but that could sort of bleed in. I mean, we saw we saw on um, on on Monday this week just the the hedge fund blow up and and, and the volatility that that was uh, the ripples through through all markets because of it. And then that. That's something you don't want to see as a big sell-off in equities that would then hurt hurt the metal space as well. You know, overall, you know, one of the interesting things is is really when 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 you know you have an onion and there's just layers as it peels back. You know, everybody saw that tremendous close on Friday. I I, I got excited for it. I mean, equities they they surged into the close. You had gold, silver, and platinum all move up as well. So things look really good. And then and then you get that onion and you start peeling the layers back. So. The Ar- Archegos had to liquidate large positions in, in a lot of media stocks from the U.S. and, and as well as, as China. And things like this Viacom CBS were down 50 percent on the week. But also at some point on Friday, they were down. Viacom CBS was down 40 percent in one point. Um, those liquidations sort of cratered through because you, you a lot of times a broker dealer would take such concentrated risk only if it's hedged out with something else. So if they're unwinding a position, for instance, selling Viacom, selling Discovery, Tencent and whatnot, they're also liquidating what was a short position in, say, the NASDAQ index or some other, you know, some other way of being of protection. And that could have explained the big surge late in the session as well. Um, so a lot of that was was kind of found out through the weekend. The, what what was left is the, is the in the dust that settled. Um, banks were there's a lot of questions around what what kind of what kind of uh, damage was at these banks. I mean, a number of banks were down pretty sharply. The even the U.S. regional bank index was down three to three and a half percent on Monday as well. So it was just sort of a ripple effect throughout uh, throughout markets. And things are settling in a bit. We saw the Russell 2000 lost almost nearly three percent. That's you know, the banks were down, but also some some of those momentum stocks and different things that that are probably highly leveraged within that hedge fund space within the small caps are uh, had to be liquid. Liquidated. And, and this is just a wake up call to a number of broker dealers, and a lot of hedge funds that have similar strategies out there because I guarantee you, Archegos is not the only one. So a lot of banks are probably working through some damage damage control and we're seeing some of that volatility play out still. Yeah, I, I think it is a little bit of a wake up call. I'm, I'm not concerned of, of a day of reckoning, so to speak, at the po- this point. And, and really the way I got to focus is as, you know, as a trader in the future side and as an investment advisor ma- managing portfolios from uh, you know, people's you know, early on in their careers. I IRAs to people retiring is is where are we looking out this quarter and where we're looking out this year and and for now I think the reopening overall that that is playing out is going to be a big tailwind through April uh, but my fear as we move through April and and we move into May and June is it would be does that reopening you know push Treasury yields higher and higher um, for now I think that's I think we're we're fairly contained and and I I think that the the overall that's the leverage that's out there is mounting but uh, I don't I don't think of it as a major headwind here today but you know maybe ask me in three to three four five months from now maybe it'd be a different scenario